All right, so um, even if you're not finished, all right, there'll be plenty of time to catch up um, as we're moving through the lesson. Let's move on to the next part then, okay, which is where we get into the calculus aspect of before. That was just a little bit of um, year 11 algebra, right, composition. So we're presented with a function, y equals 4x squared take 3x to the power of 5, and we want to differentiate it. Now you're going, where's this example written down? This is the first one I've got at the top of the page. And the reason I've typed this one out for you is I think it's important for the first one, we do an easy one, and it's important that you watch. Okay, so just watch what we're doing here. Then with the second one, we can watch and write it down at the same time. So we've got this function here and we want to differentiate it. Now one thing we could do is fully expand it. Alright, using some really long foil, we could use Pascal's um, triangle, we've got a power of 5, that's going to be so long, it's going to take a long time to do, and you've seen my expansion, I'll probably make a mistake, and once it's expanded then we can differentiate it. There's actually a quicker way, alright, and we're going to do it using composite functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to recognise this is two functions, alright, one of them is going to be the function u, okay. U is always going to be the function that is inside, the inside function. So if we look at this, we've got 4x squared take 3x, that's our inside function. And if that is U, then Y is equal to U to the power of 5. Okay? If this function is U, then Y can be described as U to the power of 5. Very good. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate the function u with regards to x. Okay, we're finding not to be one, find du on dx. That's going to be 8x. All right, we're doing the simple differentiation quickly now. 4x squared goes to 8x. 3x goes to 3. All right, so du on dx, 8x back 3. That's exercise 2b. And we're also going to differentiate y. But here our variable is not x, our variable is u. So we're going to differentiate y with regards to u. Alright, that will be 5u to the power of 4. Okay, so we can differentiate. Here our variable is u, we're differentiating with regards to u. Okay, now let's do something a little bit clever, right? If I have... What can I show you? Let's see, if I have... Um, 3 on 4 times 4 on 2 alright we could calculate that but there's a really simple way we can evaluate it as well is that when I'm multiplying these I'm going to have 4 at the top and the bottom so it's going to cancel okay? if we have the same thing at the top as we do at the bottom it's going to cancel watch what happens if we multiply dy on du by du on dx Alright, we have du at the top bottom and du at the top, it will cancel, and we're left with dy on dx. What has this question asked us to find? It said, here's the function, find dy on dx. So here's a way we can do it. We've differentiated u with regards to x, we've differentiated y with regards to u, so now, therefore, if we multiply them together, we have found dy on dx. So let's write that out. Therefore, dy on dx is going to be 8x take 3 multiplied by, I'm going to use brackets because I've got two terms here, 5u to the power of 4. But here we've got an expression in terms of 8x and u. So our very last step then is to substitute u back into the equation. 8x take 3 times 5, what is u? 4x squared, take 3x, and then u to the power of 4. Okay, so we're going to practice this skill a bit. Let's just recap exactly what we did. We recognise it's a composite function. u is always the inside function. Alright. y is always uh, the power that's involved in the function. There will always be some power. We differentiate u with regards to x and we differentiate y with regards to u and then we multiply those two things together. Okay, because dy on du times du on dx generates the answer we're looking for, dy on dx. And we 
Africa when we did the substitution. So let's go look at the next example then. Here we have to say, what is the function u? What's on the inside? That's going to be 3x take away x squared. Okay, the function u is 3x take away x squared. So we're up to the second example now, so you're welcome to write this one down. I will leave it up though, we've got plenty of space. So you're welcome to just spectate still at this stage. So that's our u function, which means y is just the square root of u. Alright, we can find du on dx. That's going to be 3, take away 2x. And we can find dy on du, but our very first step is to express it as a power, isn't it? The square root of u means u to the power of a half. And so dy on du will be half u to the minus half. Okay, so what's our process? I think I've got it written down. Let's flip back on page 8 there. Recognise the composite functions and define u. Done. We've got u, we've got y. Derive u with regards to x. Done. Derive y with regards to u. Done. Multiply them together. So now we're going to have this part multiplied by this part. And I'll just perform the substitution straight away. 3x take x squared to the minus half. Okay, so remember, u is this function. So all I've done is substitute it there or I've put it there. Now, in the back of the book, they will simplify these a little bit. Okay, so they will form some... Um, simplification of it. So let me show you, remember, when we have, um, let's do it in two steps. Firstly, if we have, if we have x to the minus half, I might even put a, a to the minus half, that is one on top of a to the half, which is one on top of the square root of a. So anytime you see a negative half power, it means the square root at the bottom. We can jump straight from there to there. So do that in a moment. All right, Vinny, what have I done? Sorry, um, you is your 3x take x squared. Thank you, very good, yep. Very good. Okay, so we've got a negative power here to the half, so that means it's gonna be a square root at the bottom of the function. So we have three take two x at the top, and then over here we've got one and we've got two at the bottom. Because this is a negative power, it's at the bottom. Because it's a half, it's a square root. 3x take x squared. All right. Um, and then if you're multiplying the fractions, that just sits on top. That's the numerator. 3 take 2x on top of 2 square root. 3x take x squared. Okay, move on to the next one. So I have the cubed root here. That's expressed as x to the power of the third. So step one, identify the composite functions. u is going to be 2x take 3. y is going to be 4 on top of the cubed root of x. All right, so you can see if we put that in there, we've got the composite function. Uh, sorry, that should say u. Root of u. So that's what we define u as, then we can express y as 4 on top of the cube root of u. Okay, step 2, differentiate u with regards to x. Alright, derivative of 2x is 2, the 3, it disappears. We want to differentiate this, we need to express that as a power, so I'm going to do it in a series of steps. Again, so that's going to be 4 on top of u to the power of a third. It's at the bottom of the fraction. Before we differentiate it, we need to take it to the top. 
So that's going to be 4 times u to the power of negative a third. Okay, so remember, when we're differentiating, I've got y, I've got y, I've got y. Now we're differentiating dy on du. Alright, so now I'm ready to differentiate this. The 4 is just going to hang out the front. It's a product, and so we're just applying the power rule here. That power comes out the front, minus a third. U to the power of minus a third, take one. Alright, minus a third, take one. These fraction operations, you know, you can use your calculator now, but you won't have it in the first test, will you? So you do need to be able to do these kinds of things. That's equal to minus a third, take three on top of three. Minus one, take three, is going to be minus four on top of three. So. And this four out the front, that can either sit there or it can sit on top of the fraction that's out the front there too. Okay, so let's bring them together to state dy on dx. So we've got du on dx, that's just 2. And then we've got dy on du, that's this component here, with the u substituted in. That's our u there, isn't it? Very good. Okay, so let's try that out. I would like us to not necessarily start with question 1, because question 1 is about... Um, Again, that composite function still. So we can come back to that. What I would like you to start with is question three. Okay, question three, we can get straight into the application of it. All right, we're performing the differentiation of those functions there.